Hey folks, Joseph Gonzalez here, and we are here to help you make your real estate career and life much easier. In today's video, I want to cover why I think real estate agents might have their ideas about EXP wrong and how they may be able to take advantage of EXP in order to further their career. You know, the first thing that I think most agents need to start to think about as they start to get into year two and they're actually successful in real estate is how am I going to retire? I don't think most agents have a retirement plan. Now, when it comes to EXP, one of the things that I think a lot of people are considering is how are they going to be retiring? There are a lot of agents who have come to us. I think I have 33 agents um, that are with me at EXP, and that's without recruiting for a year, right? And, and that's because I was putting my heart and soul along with my partners and my team to make sure that these agents continue to receive the things they need, whether it's help understanding how to talk to new agents, understanding how to continue to scale their business, or whatever that thing is. That's why I haven't actually recruited agents over into our team because I want to make sure we have a strong foundation. Now, the agents who have come over are agents that are doing three, four, five deals a month. So, you know, whenever we're talking about this, most of our agents are mainly focused on production. My job is to help them grow their agents within their actual downline, if you will, or upline or however you want to look at that particular scenario. That's not necessarily our focus. But all of them are focused on how am I going to retire and how does that model look with EXP in order to start planning for that. Because if you, as an agent, are not planning for that, let me tell you, nobody else is planning for your financial future except you. And so you need to start looking at this because most agents will say, I want to retire in five to 10 years. But realistically, you will talk to somebody and we've seen videos where an agent said, hey, I'm going to retire in five to 10 years and they're working 30 years later, right? And you don't want to be that agent. You want to be able to enjoy your life, be able to travel with your family or travel yourself if you're single in five to 10 years and have a lot of money in your investments. And so I think our agents that have come over that are high producing agents, that's what they're focused on. You know, the next thing that I want to make sure that agents understand whenever they're considering possibly moving over EXP is who you're going to be associating with is so important, right? We have different groups within EXP, different teams within EXP, and they provide a different culture. Our culture is typically surrounded upon what I started talking about earlier, which is people who are experienced agents. And I built it intentionally like that because I want agents who are successful right now that have the ability to start growing, right? Other people below them. And so I think of it like this from a sports perspective. Let's say we have an NBA basketball player that is a veteran. What are they doing? They're playing their game and they're teaching the young people behind them to eventually replace them. And that's what ownership is also doing, right? Ownership is saying, how do we continue to have great teams? And that's by bringing in new, fresh players. And so the same thing I think happens at EXP, if it's done right, and I think we're doing it right, build a strong culture with high producers, let those high producers keep producing, let them start having a plan to retire. And in that plan, you know, let's call it five to 10 years, they're also teaching people that are behind them, let's say that are doing one to three deals and they're wanting to increase that from anywhere from five to six deals per month, right? And once that happens, you now have a plan for everybody to possibly retire. And so I think you have to really understand why it was built the way it was built. It was not built to take money out of people's pockets, right? Because at the end of the day, each agent at max, if you are capping, which is great, and hopefully most of the people that you associate yourself with, like myself, are cappers, meaning that they're making, you know, 100000 plus and making um, 100% after they pay their 20% commissions, right? Uh, commission split. And if you're building it that way, each agent moving forward is helping the agent, the reaching back, if you will, and helping that agent come forward and grow their business. And so like a sports team, if done properly, everybody's building themselves up and building together, right, as a team. And then they reach back and help the person that's decided to join the team to replace them, right? And so if you have enough agents doing that, right, eventually everybody's retiring in five to 10 years. And so... I think you really have to look at it that way, not look at it as, hey, I'm rec I'm being recruited or, hey, I'm recruiting people. It's, no, I'm building a massive team of people to help support me, right? And in return for them supporting me financially through me coaching them, they're going to be supported financially because now they're going to know all the, the tips, the tricks of the trade to help them make a heck of a lot more money than they were probably making previously. So one of the problems that I think a lot of people face whenever they're being recruited by somebody to come over EXP or you know, that person's trying to bring them in as a partner at EXP is there's a lot of new agents that are out there that started with EXP that try to recruit people over. And that was their focus. And I'm not knocking those people, but you want to make sure that you are as a new agent looking for somebody, 
that has had the experience and the life that you want to live. And I think that's the way we want to make sure we continue building our system is each agent that's coming in shouldn't be looking to work with another new agent. It doesn't make sense. Now, yes, you can be friends with them, but most new agents do not have the experience that's needed in order to help you propel your career. And I think that's what EXP got wrong early, not necessarily EXP, but the agents who were coming over to EXP. So I want you to think about this and not in the, in the terms of these people that are recruiting me are recruiting me only to make money off of me, right? These people who are recruiting me, I want to know their experience. I want to know their level of success. And if I go to them and be able, and I, can I be able to pick up my phone any point in time, call them and text them and ask them, Hey, or have a call with them and say, Hey, show me how you've built your business. Show me what your day to day looks like. And I want to be able to replicate that. Those are the people that you should be wanting to join at eXp. And it's really important to be able to dive into that, right? Example, I have a hundred people every week, a hundred agents every week on a call. These are not even my agents. These are agents that we're teaching across the United States. And it's a hundred to 200 agents, really, um, depending on the week and what we're training on. And we just pour into these people, right? And we make sure that they're successful. On top of that, the agents who do come over to us, and by the way, I don't mention EXP in any of these calls, but the agents who are on our team, they're also on weekly calls with my partner, Jaime Rosendez. And whenever we're doing these calls, specifically for our team, we're making sure that we're asking them, what do you need, right? And how do you feel about the culture that we're building? Because we want people to feel at home. We want people to feel supported. And we want people to be able to feel like they're going to continue to progress their career in the path and the direction in which they want. And I think that's really important. And so as we're doing these calls, our main focus is not us. And I think that's why we call. I know that's why we call our group the Agent First Group, because we put the agents first in their success and the career path in which they want to have and the retirement plan in which they're laying first, right? We don't put our success first. And so make sure if you're looking at that, think about the type of person and the type of group and team that you want to be a part of. And so the final part that I think a lot of agents get wrong about EXP is they think that the people that are recruiting them are just trying to make money off of them. And I'm not saying there's not people at EXP that do that, right? There is, and I don't know any of them. I don't talk to them. That's not my job, right? And I, I'm not there to flush them out. That's somebody else's job. But here's what I want you to think. If you are to go to a brokerage that is going to uh, bring you in, whether it be, you know, a Keller Williams, a Remax, a, you know, Coldwell Banker, Berkshire Hathaway, whatever that company is, who do you think is making the majority of the money whenever it comes to your commission split? It's typically going to be the broker and it's going to be the national company, right? And so that 20% or, or set, you know, that 30% that you're paying, depending on your commission split, that's what they're making. Now, the interesting thing about eXp, I think a lot of agents do not understand is the way the split works at eXp is it's 20% goes into, we'll call it the eXp money pot, if you will. Then each agent that brings somebody over, right, makes a small percentage of that. And the max they can make is between 28 to 3,200 off of, quote unquote, off of an agent. So I think everybody at eXp is a, as a mini broker. You want to make sure that you're aligning yourself with the right mini brokers or set of mini brokers, right? Like we have 200 plus agents with us. Um, 30 of those are directly, 30 plus of those are directly with me. And those mini brokers are super successful. And so whenever you're looking at the math of this, I want you to think about this. If you go pay for some guru to run your Facebook ads, how much are you going to pay? Probably $1,500 to $2,000 a month. Why would you go pay some guru $1,500 to $2,000 a month whenever you could be aligned with somebody that teaches you how to run the Facebook ads the right way, teaches you how to convert the leads because most agents don't actually have a lead problem, right? They have a conversion problem and then teaches you how to do other things within your business without charging you a single dime. So whenever I say agents are thinking about EXP wrong, these are the things that I think are important to understand and have clarity on. You need to know that the people that are going to be bringing you over or you're going to be teaming up with or partnering with, because that's what we have. We have teammates and partners. These people need to be very well-versed and successful in real estate. And then you need to be able to align yourself with those type of people and get proximity to them. Because the only thing that can happen if you want to be successful and you're aligned with those type of people is you can be greatly successful. So you can go to another team or broker and they'll teach you how to pay somebody to do Facebook ads or not teach you anything and you can go, you know, pay for whatever you want to pay for. 
or you come over and join a team like ours where our culture is all about helping agents first and supporting you and aligning you with people who are already, already really successful. And then that is the way to go instead of spending a lot of money and spending your wills trying to figure out how to be successful in real estate. Just pick up the phone and call the people that are on our team in our group and they'll help you. With all that being said, I hope that this video was helpful for those of you who are considering EXP and looking for the right team and culture because it is highly important that we help more people be more successful and not focus on ourselves. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you like. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer those whenever I get a moment and I'm over this, whatever is going on here, the sickness and, um, you know, maybe allergies, but look forward to talking to you, look forward to helping you and supporting you if you decide to come over to us. And if not, maybe you decide to join one of our calls and, you know, get a taste of what we do. We'll talk to you soon.